Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Spotlight. There are prevalent sentiments within the Muslim community that Islam is being constantly targeted and attacked. Words like sharia, halal, burqa, niqab are regularly used by the media and agencies for ratings and fee, fum- and fee mongering. And this has been the case for the last decade. Although these values are dear and part of every Muslim, they have become contaminated in the way that they are perceived. There are many debates and many different views about how Islamophobia can be washed away from our social fabric. American comedian Omar Regan claims that his new film, American Sharia, challenges media perception of Islam. He has made a jump from Hollywood to what he calls Halaliwood. He says that the aims of this film are to break barriers, demystify Islamic misconception and to bust myths that are so prevalent in popular media. This project has however been met with some backlash from within the Muslim community with some considering his productions to be not so halal. To find out how halal Halaliwood is, I have with me in the studio the man behind the movie, Omar Regan himself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. How are you doing, man? Shukran. Thank you for having me on the Spotlight. Welcome to Spotlight, Omar. Now, this show, American Sharia, uh, Sharia, Mm -hmm. um, what are you trying to accomplish with this movie and why exactly is it called American Sharia? Well... First answer to the question is, what I'm trying to accomplish is, alhamdulillah, why I want to say what we are accomplishing, bi-ithnillah, is a re-education and a reintroduction of Muslims and Islam um, for the world. Because I, from my experience, even in America, and I'm, I'm seeing that you guys have it here in Australia, people think they know Islam, or they think they know Muslims, and they use these words, sharia, jihad, oh, in the media, and they have no idea. So it's almost like in, uh, in every film, Muslims is associated with terrorism, and we're not. We don't know anything about terrorism. There's a billion Muslims around the world. And it's unfortunate that the majority of the people at large are just automatically look at Muslims and have this, oh, but that's because of the, the promotion of Islamophobia. Second reason why, uh, a- answer the question is, why is it called American Sharia? Well, because in 2009, the FBI, the American government, they killed my father, um, shot him 20 times, and they said that he wanted to establish Sharia in America, and they put his face up and called him a terrorist. And then, alhamdulillah, later they came back and they apologized, and they said, sorry, we didn't, we made a mistake. Just like that. Just like that. But my father is gone. And so I'm thinking, what can I do to help change that? Because even the officers, they're just following orders. You know, this guy is bad, he wants to establish Sharia, and they scare all of these officers, and you got all of these officers just standing over my father as he lay on the ground, and they shoot him. Um, so I said, man, I have to do something within myself to try to change that. But how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called my father home, alhamdulillah, um, and may Allah accept him in the Jannah. But how can I maybe stop it from happening to someone else? How can I change law where it's not okay for them to target Muslims and then make up all of these different stories? Because they never went back into the media and said he wasn't a terrorist. They never did that. They just said sorry to me, and then whatever happened in the media, they never recanned any statements or anything. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on, on your father's soul and give him the highest levels of paradise. Amen. Now, this movie has screened in the UK, yes. and it's currently screening in, here in Australia. Some have accused you of making a mockery of Sharia, of Halal, of Jihad, and even of the recitation of the Qur'an. How would you respond to this? Oh, it, it's, it's totally, I mean, I cannot, <laughs> can't even believe it. The Muslims would actually, that's what they saw in a trailer. So I made a trailer, subhanAllah. And I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I apologize on the one spotlight to all Muslims around the world. If the trailer that I made confused them or made them think anything negative, like, I don't, how would I even do that? Like, subhanAllah, it doesn't make sense. I love Islam. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I'm not going to make fun of anything. Um, I just want to hold it in high esteem, high regard. I cut the trailer to target people of other faith. Because I automatically knew that Muslims would get exactly where I was going in the film. But I gave Muslims too much credit, man. <laughs> so I was, I'm shocked that the Muslims actually responded. Now, even certain people, Brother Malaz, I messaged them to tell them, no, this is not what you think. Because it shocked me when I was starting. They, they called me kafirs and all kind of things, man, subhanAllah. It just made me, it really, it made me say, the only reason why people call Muslims terrorists is because Muslims terrorize other Muslims without we, knowledge. We would like to understand. And look, we all know that 
when we do an act in our religion, there are two elements, two ingredients. There's sincerity, which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can judge. And there's also the sharia compliance, which is something that we have to uh, take the onus on ourselves to, you know, to make sure that we are compliant with the actions that we do. So in this movie, we find that there is things like music, violence, mm. lurting. Did you consult with a particular scholar uh, prior to making this movie? Yes, I've spoke to numerous of them, alhamdulillah. And a lot of them was like, man, subhanAllah, man, I, that because I gave them the whole story. But a lot of them that I spoke to, respectful scholars, even in America, they know me, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for me to sit down and speak with them, and they just, alhamdulillah, man, it looks really good. For instance, the flirt scene where the character, where it's in the trailer where I'm speaking different languages. SubhanAllah, the next scene, and I'm going to give it away on the spotlight, is that the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu when my partner Abdul says, I'm like, I didn't do nothing because I wanted to, in writing it, I wanted to respect the boundaries of not touching. And I wanted to teach because it happens. Everything in this movie, SubhanAllah, that I wrote is from actual events that happen. So I wrote that this guy is talking to her like that. And then I wrote that my partner says what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the young man when he asked that if he was okay for him to commit fornication that he wanted permission from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, would you want that for your sister? Would you want that for your mother? Mm -hmm. You have to respect every woman. And that's the very next scene after that, uh, the flirt scene. Our, our role model, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had a great sense of humor. He once told an old lady that no old lady will enter paradise. And then when he saw she was be upset, he said, Satadkhulina shabbat, and you will enter as a youth, you will enter in a young age. Yeah. So Prophet Muhammad had a great sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, and there's many other stories that we know of how humorous Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Sallam. Where do you draw the line when it comes to comedy and, and Islam? So you have, for example, a particular scene in the, in the movie where, for example, a cop is trying to arrest someone and then he's, he's got to stop for his prayers. And then the person he's trying to arrest sort of gets away which might indicate to some people that this person, because of his prayer, he's not doing his job properly. Mm -hmm. So where do you draw the line between comedy and Islam? Honestly, do I, for myself, I make sure that I'm not being offensive to anybody um, because this is what I'm studying from the Prophet so I'm watching what you say and don't lie, be honest. Mm -hmm. And I think it's unfortunate because Muslims want, they don't want to be honest. There are some Muslims, some ignorant Muslims out there. We're not like, we don't have like, oh my God, everybody is just so great, mashallah. That's not the truth. Mm -hmm. And if I tell a story that's real about a guy who's not doing his job properly and he's kind of confused, he has issues, man. And he needs help. I can't please everybody. Alhamdulillah, I understand that. But somebody is going to always find something wrong with something. And alhamdulillah, I just... It happens. I mean, we, if, if it didn't happen, the imam wouldn't be yelling on the khutbah, on the member every Friday, mm -hmm. you know, to try to encourage people because Muslims make a lot of mistakes. And if we keep on acting like Muslims don't make mistakes and then we don't attempt to correct those mistakes and we want to live in a bubble, <clears throat> then I think it's just a poor representation of Islam and there's no room for youth to look up and say we, we need to grow, we need to be better, we need to do better. So I think if somebody was to see that scene, they would be like, oh, man, yeah, that's, that is crazy. I know somebody that did that. Or even I have a scene in the film also where I'm attempting to make a lot. Like my character that I play, um, he was, his confidence of being, calling himself Muslim and Islam was very low. Like, and there are Muslims like this. They're very Muslim, like a lot of Especially Muslims like this. Especially in the this. West. Yes. And around the world too. Like I've been traveling, subhanAllah, and like even the youth, they don't like to tell people that they're Muslim. And again, I, I blame that on, you know, media and us being afraid, but yeah. <clears throat> I'm scared to mix a lot in public. So in the scene now, people are laughing because they've done it too. They break a lot when somebody come in there because they're shy to pray and they break a lot. So I, I put that scene in there because that was our personal experience that I have myself. Mm. And then I show my partner who's not afraid to make a lot in front of people because it's about Allah first and people second. And subhanAllah, man, I, it just, I, I think it's good for myself, like from watching it and my children are watching it and it gives them some confidence. I have children too and I don't want them to be afraid to say who they are or what they believe. Now you've mentioned the media and there's no shortage of fee mongering in the media. Um, how have non-Muslims responded to watching this movie? Alhamdulillah, I haven't screened it worldwide yet. 
I've done screenings around Muslims, but I do have little packages of people of other faith who have come mm -hmm. and attend the film. But let me say this. The ones who worked on the movie with me are not Muslim. Even it was a Jewish lady, subhanAllah, she, she's my producer. She come, I ran out of money to making this movie because Muslims didn't want to help me because everybody was so skeptical. How can you make a Hollywood movie and keep it halal? I explained to them, I said, well, we won't have men and women touching. We won't have no profanity. We won't have any sex. Sex is private for us, alhamdulillah. We don't speak about these things in public. And then we're going to tell the truth and we're going to give da'wah. And the Muslims was like, oh, how? This is impossible. I was telling them, I've been in Hollywood over 10 years, man. I know how to do it, alhamdulillah. I just need your support. But I understand the skepticism. Like, so the Jewish lady, subhanAllah, she come. She's my producer now. She's like, I love this message that you're putting out. I love the message of unity and one God. I love it. So she supported me with money. And now I want to finally close up and ask you about your, your father, which you did mention before, Imam uh, Luqman Abdullah, who was featured in the movie. Yes, alhamdulillah. How, how did he influence this movie? Subhanallah, man. Alhamdulillah. I'm really... Yeah, he um, a lot, subhanAllah, because he taught me Salat, he taught me Qur'an, he taught me to study the Prophet Sallallahu And I watched my father, subhanAllah, like grow, he grew. Um, when we first become Muslim, I'm five years old, and my father, everything was haram. Like, it all depends on who's teaching you. And so my father, he went through all of these different stages of studying. We watched him years after years, and all he kept doing was reading about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until he actually become a very balanced individual. And then he come back, he said, some things, I mean, I made some mistakes here. I made some mistakes here. And he would just break all of the things down. And it really made Islam so fulfilling and so, like, I went to Hollywood, man, and because of everything that my father was teaching me, that alhamdulillah, I didn't get swallowed up. The fame never attracted me like that because my father was always teaching us inna salata tanha anil fahsha. And I was living in the fahsha. <laughs> like, I was like, man, so my father, subhanAllah, always told him that I wanted him to be a part of the film. And, and alhamdulillah, when they killed him, it really touched me um, because they killed him for nothing, you know. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to have mercy on, on your father's soul and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to serve his deen in a mm -hmm. manner that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Brother Amarigan, thank you for being with us. Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, shukran. And thank you for watching. You can join the conversation on our Facebook page or send us an email to spotlight at onepathnetwork.com. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.